you're keeping the name relevant you keep us so keep on you know to all the critics Continue what you're doing. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. At least something stuck with them. Yo, Cleo Ice Queen's outfit. Whoa, it's a fight. <laughs> was your husband around when, when, when you came through? He wasn't? But in Western province, see this? Mm. Our breasts are out. The others were believed that you went under the knife. How true is it that you really? underwent plastic surgery? <clears throat> is it because you're expensive to book or <laughs> you just don't appeal to organizers? He's your maps. You know, he's an international superstar now. He's supposed to be giving us international standard performances. Allow me to welcome the only, the one and only award-winning artist, Cleo Ice Queen. Hi, Cleo. How are you doing? Hi, Chimweka. I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. It feels like last time I hosted you was last year. Was it last year? Yeah, in a couple probably. Of years. Probably. But yeah? good to see you. Good to see you too. Hi, Diamonds. I was just showing earlier, I think I, I, we met uh, a couple of events. I think it was an event. Yes. Uh, we had a Johnny Walker event yeah. there. That's where we last met, actually, a yeah. couple of weeks ago. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, first of all, what was it like working on this song here with the J Cash and Lismore? Well, first of all, let's give credit to, you know, Kekero, the producer of the song, because he birthed the idea of the song. Mm. And he, he came to me with the idea and he's like, it's like this, so I need you to rap in Nyanja. And, you know, mm -hmm. he always pushes my, my limits. Just when I thought I can't do it, he would just make me do it. Yeah. And then we had the song and the chorus, which was sounding good. I was like, okay, this is different, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted it heavily auto-tuned because we wanted to give it a different feel. We've seen the likes of Lil Wayne do it. Hi, Wayne. <laughs> we've seen the likes yeah. of Travis Scott do it. Um, so I, I just realized we've never really exper experimented with that side of, of my rap where your voice is tuned to the, to the max, you mm -hmm. know? So I was like, okay, this is different. This is nice. And I felt I don't want to do another verse which sounds like this. And mm. I don't want to do an ordinary rap as well. So who can we feature on it? And my husband was like, you know, why don't you think, why don't you do something with uh, J Cash and Dismo? You know, those guys are really running LSK with yeah, hip hop right yeah, now. True, so true. big up to them. And I was like, They wow. have the streets on lock. They really do have the streets on lock. I mean, yeah. I have seen Dismo fill up that uh, Le Levy's um, Wanawasa, the upstairs parking lot. Mm. I had to perform there. I couldn't even get in. I didn't even perform. I could not get Whoa. in. The place was so packed. And I was like, where have I been? What is this? You mm. know, and then I really took a keen interest in him and he's got a unique style and unique vibe. With Jay Cash, I fell in love with him from the time he did the song with Kikero. I think it's called Akamutima. Akamutima, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then he did the Mutima song mm. and then he did People Like Me with Your Maps and I was like, this guy is unstoppable. And he did yeah. some rap, I think an alphabet rap. Oh, yes. That, in was Yanja, right? that was dope. That was dope. I was just like, no, man, this guy is too much. And I was like, this is a perfect combination. I love the Upper Iliso gang. I love yeah. what they do. I love what they represent. I love how they carry themselves. So when they sent their verses, I was so excited. I heard Jay Cash's verse first and I was like, ah, oh, this is so nice, you know, this yeah. is like Range Rover music, you mm. know. And then when Dismo sent his verse, I was like, what <laughs> is this? Like, yeah. who, who, who's fighting with this guy? You better stop because, you know, yeah. he, he came with the fire. Like, I love his verse. Even when I rap it, when I finally got how I could rap it, mm -hmm. like my nyanja was just like, I was like, yes. It felt so good because I was just like, and that's what made us feel like this song is actually so beautiful. And the video shoot was, was amazing. Director Lo did a good job. We shot everything in one day. Mm. We started early. We shot at the house in Kaunda Square. Big shout out to the mama who allowed us to shoot at the house in Kaunda Square with her lovely kids. Mm. And then we went to the market at Stalilo. And then after that, we went and completed everything at the roadhouse yeah. in Ibex. Mm. All in one day. We were done by like 11 p.m. Yeah. Midnight, somewhere there. But... It was, it was successful, it was eventful, it was productive. So big up to each and every person that played a role in, in seeing this through. You look like you also had fun shooting the video. Yes, uh, we did. We, we could <laughs> see from, from that. Um, and you've mentioned people that you've worked with before, Kekero, yes. Director Lowe. Yes. You, seem, you seem to have a very good relationship with both of them, isn't Yes, it? I absolutely do have a very good relationship with them. You know, I like to keep... Um, a good team around me. I think people that are just easy to work with, people that I vibe with, yeah. you know, so they really work right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw you rapping Dismo's verse. I said, hey, how did, how long did it take you to, to get that together? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I rehearsed it like, okay, I listened to the song a lot, yeah. even just to visualize what we're going to do for the music video. So I feel like his verse was the most challenging one to get because it's Jay Cash, it's, it's very vibe, it's very yeah. nice. His wordplay is what makes the verse mm, so stunning. Mm. But with Dismo, it's like there's a lot of energy. energy. Got, ah, like, you know. <laughs> So there was a lot of, ah, yeah. each time before I do the verse just to warm up my voice for it. Yeah. And then finally now to get like the pronunciations, like um, he goes what? Don't delay ngauli na zanga, ni mankala bita ni impwa. Davatika kumana ozaka enda na liso imozi yoshi I was just like, wow. Did he have to send you like his, his, his lyrics? Or you um, had to just... Eventually he sent me yeah. his lyrics, but I got the verse before I got the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. When I got the lyrics, it just clarified a few things he was saying, like, um, I'm bowling, bro, ni barondo. So I was like, at first I was like, um, I'm all in, bro. That's what I was hearing. Oh, okay. And okay. then the other part that I didn't get was, um, I don't know if he said Zungunuka vibes, rolling ball, Zungunuka vibes, rolling ball. One of the two. But when I got the lyrics and I got it, I was like, wow, this guy yeah. is insane. It's like wordplay, yeah. but making sense and it's rhyming and it's... And it's energetic. It's, an, it's like he's upset that my page almost got hacked. So I'm <laughs> upset. Let me... <laughs> Somehow the, the, the name Pamshasha, I don't even know what it means. Right? What does it mean? I think Pamshasha is like, uh, like almost like on the, on the hood or the, like almost like Pabondi of some sort. Oh, really? But like a deeper slide. For some, for some odd reason, it, it works. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. working for him. It's better you get hacked and, yeah. But I just hope he, he gets everything sorted. But we're doing what we can to just let the people know that that's his page because we want to see him grow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Also, um... I really wish I was at the, the launch of the music video. I did share with you that, oh, I'm really sorry. I really yeah. regret not being there. But, I mean, I was looking at the pictures afterwards and I'm thinking to myself, I really should have been there. You really should have been there. Um, I'm like, <laughs> yo, Cleo Ice Cream's outfit. Whoa, it's a fight. <laughs> was your husband around when, when, when you came through? He wasn't? <laughs> he was. He usually approves all of my outfits, but that one I was like, mm, if I shame this outfit, I don't even know what he's going to say. But... You know, the whole outfit is, is see-through. So what I did is I put on a white jumpsuit inside uh -huh. and then I put the outfit on top. So it's, it's, it's an optic illusion. Mm -hmm. It looks like I'm not wearing anything, yeah. but I'm actually very fully clothed and everything is covered. Yeah. So, because there's a whole white bodysuit inside. inside. And then yeah. if you look at the arms, that shows you like the true color of that jumpsuit. But I feel like, you know, when you have somebody like a gymnast or a yeah. ballerina and mm. they're going to work, they're not going to go and do their gymnastics in a chitenge or oh, in, yeah. in a trousers, you know. Every career has an outfit. So for me, I like to have my music side of things. I mean, look at me. This is me every day, mm. you know. Mm. Um, this is normal Clementina Mlinga or Cleo <laughs> Ice Queen for this interview. Yeah. But with this outfit, I can do your interview. Yeah. I can go and attend another meeting for my, for my formal stuff. Yeah. But if you catch me on stage, you, can't, you will not catch me in this outfit. Mm. So I think of it as a swimmer. When they're going to swim, they put on their costume and they jump into the pool. A performer, you can't expect them to wear your everyday clothes. The whole point of being a performer is that you've got a costume that separates you from the audience. When people look, they're like, who is that? That's a performer. She's going to jump on stage. She's going to do her thing. She's attracting attention to her. She's the star of the show. We're launching her music video. So you have to put on your costume to do your job. When you go into the mines, you put on your costume. You put on your hat. You put on your overalls or whatever it is that you wear. It's like that with every career. Everybody has a costume. So let's not judge artists or performers when they put on their costume to get on stage to entertain you. Weren't you entertained? <laughs> Did you not like the outfit? Yeah. You know, so I knew that the outfit was risque. And even when I first tried it on, I was like, I can't wear this on its own and, and have it see through. Mm. It's just a little too much. So I was like, either I wear a black jumpsuit inside, a white one, or a nude one. I said, if I wear a nude one, it will still look nude yeah and then i was like a white one will at least contrast it will show that listen she's wearing uh, something but i feel like the optic illusion of the glitters and where they were placed mm -hmm. is what probably deceived a lot of people but i noticed a lot of sharp icy gang they're like i see you mommy you're fully yeah. dressed you're fully covered but you know it's an artistic expression so uh, how, how do you also reconcile that for people in the entertainment business because 
Zambia is still a very conservative country. You, 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 even if you have that as a brand on stage, off stage, yeah. but you still have people who have all these expectations and yeah. th that never leaves some people in, in this country. So how do you manage to balance that, especially for a brand like yours, which is not just within the country? Yeah. I think it's normal for people to have expectations mm. and I appreciate that our country is a conservative country. We are who we are, so let's embrace that, you know, but um, like I said, it's just a matter of these little things that we do to push the boundary to, to bring, if we're not going to be exposed as a nation and say like not everybody's going to be able to travel, not everybody's going to be able to have access to certain things, so we learn through each other. We are yeah. we're getting exposure through each other. There's something I can learn from you, Chumweka, yeah. which I never knew before. And I'll be like, oh, really? Is that what they do? And then there's something you can learn from me as well. So let's uh, keep an open mind. Of course, we need to respect our, our culture, our tradition, and all of those things. But there's a place and a time for everything. It's not a Chilangam Lino. It's a performance. It's Johnny Walker. It's a global brand. You know, I will be... I, I like to see my brand as a global brand that will be able to sit side by side with Beyonce, to sit side by side with Rihanna, to sit side by side with P. Diddy, with Kanye West, with Jay-Z. So if I view myself as a global brand, even when other brands view me, I have to bring something delightful and exciting to the table that's like, wow, I didn't know Zambians would be able to present themselves in this type of way. So it's, it's a good infusion. Everybody always says, like, when you, when you dress too exposed, they're like, we're losing our culture. But in Western province, to this, mm. our breasts are out. Even, like, before all these cloths came to us with the ships on the seas, mm. what were we wearing? We would grab a leaf and just hide the parts that are necessary. Mm. And even when people talk about, like, Chitenge is our thing. It's actually not. Yes, now we've embraced it as our thing, mm. but in all honesty, what's really ours is gold. What's really ours is diamonds. Because where will you find diamonds and gold? Mm. It's in Africa. What's really ours is emerald. So don't be afraid to adorn your body with the gems that are of your soil. Mm. You know, for me, when I wear my bling bling, I'm like, this is actually African. It's not foreign because I've worn bling bling mm. or I've, mm. I've got some skin showing. That's us. That's our stuff. So we should embrace it. Chitenge comes from um, China. They manufacture it. They mass manufacture it there. Yes, we might say Congo. They're not manufacturing Chitenge's in Congo. Tell me about a, a plant, a factory in Congo that's manufacturing Chitenge's. We're still um, endorsing brands that are coming from outside. So let's be open-minded about what we do and what we say. And even with the, I'll go to the Lusaka July thing. I yeah. don't know if you were going to yes. throw in yeah, that. Yes, definitely. We'll but a lot that. of people were like, it's not royal enough. It's giving Chilanga Mulilo. But uh, so royalty should only be Queen Elizabeth. When I put on a crown, then that makes me royal. Royalty is what we make it. Even just us being African alone, that's our royalty. Go and see our chiefs and, and everything. They said a royal empire of purple or something yeah, like yeah. that. Why do we always quickly translate royal to English or England? Why do we always quickly translate royal to one place? Royal is uh, Eswatini. Royal is just here in, in Western province. Royal mm. is Chitimkulu. Royal is, royalty is what we make it. So you don't have to put on a crown with, with jewels. Like, yes, the jewels are ours, of course. <laughs> so you can. But that's not the only thing that makes you royal. So we need to always switch our mindset and think outside the box. When you think royal here, it is Chilangam Lilo vibes. It mm. is kitchen party vibes. Actually, that's what feels like royalty to us. And this thing of where we embrace a Nigerian culture, a South African culture, that thing shouldn't be looked down upon. Because at the end of the day, that's Africa. We are Africans. We inter interconnect at one point. You are better off embracing Niger, South Africa, East Africa, West Africa, and ourselves as Zambia, rather than embracing... English, Western, and Japanese, Indian, or whatever other culture. So let's not look down on ourselves when we embrace a Nigerian accent or you see a, a Zambian on TikTok doing a South African accent. It's for play, but it's something that will bring Africa together at one point or another. The queen is spitting gems, spitting yes. copper. Absolutely. And, and besides, <laughs> it's interesting how people are talking about royalty with Cleo Ice Queen. Yes. And we're arguing about royalty, really. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. Uh, but after the break, I'd like 
us talk about your gym routine. Okay. Uh, because I, I, I want to start. Sure. So I got you. <laughs> we'll take a break and we'll talk about going to the gym and much more with Clear Ice Queen. Hi, this is Muizu Kanji. You're watching On The Table with Chimweka. Welcome back. We're still hanging out with Cleo Ice Queen. And hey, just before the break, there's a lot of wisdom that was being shared over here. But I'd like to get your wisdom on gimming. Yeah. You've been very consistent with it, mm -hmm. uh, at least from anyone, what we're able to see. And, yes. and you seem to be loving it. <laughs> I love it. How, how, how did you manage to really get so invested in it and yeah. to be consistent? Because, you know, people plan on starting. Mm -hmm. It's the resolution for almost everybody at the beginning of the at year. At the beginning of the year, yes. But people don't actually manage. And when they start, they, they fall off. Yeah. How have you managed to do that? Um, it's really not easy. I'll start with that. Um, but I've been a very athletic and active person for a very long time. I was in the netball team in, in nursery school, mm. like literally. So this is something that has been embedded in me. I remember going to school, my dad would do school run and then he would go to the gym. And then one time we missed school, I think we were late and I was like, dad, you can't take me to school because I'm late, I'm mm. gonna get a punishment. So I was like, okay, come with me to the gym. So we went to the gym and I fell in love with the whole, you know, weights and gymming besides the athletic side where I was playing netball in the nursery school team. And then when I went into primary school, I think I pretty much played netball throughout until grade six when I started playing a bit of basketball, five, six, grade five and six, four, five, six. Mm. I was playing basketball, netball and baseball. And then when I went into high school, I took my basketball very, very seriously. I actually won an award at Banana International School for Best Junior Basketball Player. And I was, I was like in a lot of teams. I was actually there a few weeks ago and I was looking at our yearbook. Mm. So I was in the netball team, I was in the soccer team, and I was in the basketball team. I was in the swim team, but I don't know why I didn't make it to those pictures. I used to swim <laughs> backstroke. Maybe I was still a little too black oh, at the time. But yeah, I remember do swimming um, uh, backstroke for maybe just in-house, in yes. And then after that, in college... I kind of fell off. I tried to play basketball and I wasn't as good. I was so depressed. Mm. And I think the, the sports culture in my college just wasn't as good to support and continue. But if I wasn't a rapper, my dream was actually to become a WNBA player. That's how invested I was in basketball. No. So, yes. So I think that whole activeness that I had, I had my first child at 20. Don't do what I did. But, you know, do if you're married. Um, <laughs> I think it's nice to grow up with her and also that's when the whole thing started because you know I was so young and my body changed compared to all of my friends and I was like you know I really need to do a lot to keep up and I was working towards my 21st birthday so I really put in a lot of work I was working out in the morning and in the evening just to achieve my body for my 21st birthday and then after that I think it, it kind of became a lifestyle so it's okay to fall off but always just pick it back up. Mm. I've fallen off a couple of times as well myself. And with each child, you know, comes a, a different challenge with your body. It's not the same every time. When I was 20, it was easier to snap back. When I was uh, 27 and I had Zico, it wasn't as easy to snap back. And that's where everything kind of started to balloon. My boobs went crazy. You know, everything went kind of crazy. And then... I didn't finish bouncing back, and then I had um, Kutemwa, mm. uh, my last, my last born boy. Because I say last born because I'm, I'm done. Like I mean, <laughs> look at this body. We're not messing it up again. Um, I love the babies, but come on, <laughs> Mama needs to work now, darlings, <laughs> and enjoy the fruits of her labor. <laughs> so yeah, with Kutemwa, I was working out with him while I was pregnant at Evolve Gym. Like I said, it's a ladies' gym, so it was very comfortable for me to be in the gym, do my spin classes, break a sweat while you know, um, I'm, I'm still pregnant and they have very um, accommodating classes for pregnant women as well. Okay. So they, they modify everything for you and there's a specific prenatal yoga, prenatal Pilates that you can actually partake at the gym. So ever since that, COVID broke out and stalled us. But after I gave birth, I was back again, even with COVID. We did the social distancing by the poolside and continued working out. And ever since, I've just been in and out. The most I'll take a break from the gym would be like two months, then I'm being very bad. Mm -hmm. But even if you're on the break, try and do some skipping, you know, try and do some walking. The, the aim is about movement. You need your body to move and you need your heart to pump 
um, the blood so that it's, you know, it, it works all through your body and that's what gets things going. So mm -hmm. don't, don't stress too much about being in the gym every day, this and that. Stress about movement because our bodies were meant to move. They were not meant to be stagnant. So mm. move, stretch, you know, because you don't, I don't get those aches and creaks where you stand up and you're like, oh, my back, you mm. know. Mm. And I've had three kids, like three very big kids. My kids were almost four kgs. Mm. So the, pro, the, the, the important thing is just movement. Take a walk, take a jog, buy a bicycle, ride around with your kids. Even if it's kicking a football around with your kids or with your friends or whatever it is, the whole point is just to, to stay moving and stay active. Mm. You can keep your muscle mass actually until the age of 80 because muscle doesn't age. So if you focus on building your muscle, you know, do some light weights, you'll find that you maintain your weight very well into your, into your old age. Mm. Uh, despite you sharing a lot about your gym experiences, the others of believe that you went under the knife. How true is it that you really? underwent plastic surgery? That's actually very complimentary. Really? <laughs> if, if we're made to believe that, then mm. that's a huge, huge compliment. Really? Yes. All I can say is you've you got to keep working. And I mean, I wouldn't judge somebody who would do it because you need all the help you can get. Mm. And um, with surgery, it's something that's... Um, that is actually a necessity. It's something that helps and changes people's lives. Mm. You know, so I wouldn't judge that, but even with surgery, you still have to keep working. Mm. You still have to put in the work because surgery is not a fix it all. You know, if you're not in a healthy lifestyle before that, it's not gonna go well. If you're not in a healthy lifestyle after that, everything that you did is just gonna reverse itself. So ultimately what it is, is your health first. Okay, yeah. nice, nice. But even away from, from the gym, and getting back to the music, um, you've, you've received a lot of criticism. I mean, critics literally have had, you know, <laughs> things to, <laughs> to say about your music. <laughs> Clear Ice Cream is not the best of rappers. She should just quit music, try something else, maybe stick to the influencing and, and so on. Yeah. What's your comment on that? Um, I, I don't think I have a comment. I think even all the greats have been criticized before. Mm. So... I mean, it's, it's only normal for people to have their opinions, but they always need to remember that your opinion is as good as tissue. It's useless, you know what I mean? Mm. So I just keep doing what I'm doing. I keep riding the bicycle so I don't fall, and that's the key. The moment you stop riding is the moment you're going to fall. So for me, I'm a ride till I die, honey. Best believe that. <laughs> yeah, because I've seen some, some of them bringing back, you know, old lines, shoulda, woulda, coulda. At least something stuck with them. <laughs> I just feel like people don't really listen. Yeah. People ride off of um, what the next person says. If it's, if it's not trendy to support Cleo, or if it's not trendy to support Mumpy, if it's not trendy to support uh, Bombshell, yeah. then everybody just kind of jumps on it. But they don't really take their time to actually listen because my music is not club music. I'm not expecting to have club bangers. That's not my vibe. I make music where people want to listen. There's a vibe for everybody. Mm. I love I love club bangers. Cause I love me the club. I love being in the club. But that's not the music that I like to make. I mean, one or two, three songs for the club is great. But ultimately, I like to make music that even in years from now, you can still listen to when you take your road trip to see a bonga. I think people haven't really taken the time to actually listen to the music and all they have stuck in them is the, the, the banger that they once heard that went viral mm. or... There's other music that's like very feminine. It's for females and they love it and they'll vibe to it. You know, I've had an artist like Mumbayachi come to tell me like, uh, he's an amazing performer, by the mm, way. Jeez. Yeah. I had him come to me. He's like, you know, my favorite song by you is EXO. I just love that song. I also love EXO. Yeah. I think like, that's one of my favorite, yeah. favorite songs. No matter what I do, that mm. song is always on my playlist. And I've had people come to tell me, for me, I love Turn Up. Turn Up is my song. You know, mm. that one is a jam. Other people come to me and say, Cleo, I love your song, Dreamers with Teal. That mm. song, it just, you know, it does things to me. Yeah. So I feel like I'm a type of artist who tries to do, not really tries, but I, I love it that I have something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I can't be everybody's cup of tea, you know. Not even everybody drinks tea. I can't be everybody's tequila. <laughs> not everybody drinks tequila. So stick to what you like. If you don't like Cleo, mm. don't listen to Cleo. Yeah. Why would you come and you know, wake up and take time out of your day to say, it's like me waking up and taking the, my phone and saying, mm, let me comment on this new Cardi B song with Megan Thee Stallion bongos. I don't mm. like the way they're dancing. Why did Cardi B say, 
Oh, I can't say what she said. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have to censor that. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, that is the craziest lyric I've ever heard. And I'll think about it, right? I'll keep it to myself. I'll laugh about it. Mm. But you won't find that song on my playlist. And you won't find me going to tweet about it because I do have an opinion, yes. Mm. But what does it matter to, to Cardi? What does it matter to her sales? At the end of the day, I'm bringing attention to what she's doing. And then people are going to be like, oh, what is Cleo talking about? Let me go check out this this song. So at the end of the day, you're keeping the name relevant. You keep her so keep on, you know, to all the critics. Continue what you're doing. I absolutely love it. Um, for me, it's always it's always all love, man. Uh, for me, I mean, I can empower a lot of people. You know what yeah. I mean? Not only my music makes me money. I, I make money in so many ways. And instead of you critiquing, come and ask me how you can actually get a bag. Come and ask me how Ooh. you can actually have a career that is sustainable, that is beyond <laughs> even just music. Yeah. Even if you see the greats of today, for me, I look up to Jay-Z because mm. Jay-Z is a great rapper. A lot of people will argue and say Jay-Z didn't have his peak like Nas did or like Lil Wayne did or like mm. 50 Cent did. Yeah, he's been a consistent rapper, but he hasn't really had like, this is Jay-Z's era. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But does that affect Jay-Z's billion mm -hmm. uh, dollar empire? Yeah. It doesn't. And I view myself as a Jay-Z. I don't need to be number one. I don't need to be popping every time. But honey, I'm going to be there until I die. And these millions must believe they're going to be in my bank. <laughs> he's, he's, not a, he's not a businessman. He's a business man. That is the exact same sentence I've been using my whole career. I, I am that. the business. You are the business. And speaking of that, I mean, you've done very well with your endorsement. Someone was telling me that... Um, Cleo is probably the most, the best branded, commercially branded artist we have in the country. And I thought about it, I'm like, hmm, that's actually pretty deep when you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that a lot of your, if you've got events and so on, most of them are quite branded and, and you are doing something with, with your partners and so on. Yeah. But then others would say, we don't see Cleo much when you talk about some of these gigs, these festivals and, and so on. Is it because you're expensive to book or <laughs> you just don't appeal to organizers? What is it? Um, thank you for that, actually, the, the compliment. of it, It's really a lot of work to keep the brand on point, and I really want to thank my team. I've got a great support system, good management, good glam squad, and my husband also is very, very supportive. I mean, he's an intellectual genius. Yep, he yeah. tells me what to do, and yeah. I'm just like, okay, I'll do that. The master's you know. degree is working. <laughs> the master's degree is working for this household. Yeah. So... I think it's, it's about balancing everything because I can't let go of my music and focus on influencing the same way I can't let go of influencing and focus on music. It's all part of who I am. It's what makes me diverse and it's what makes me versatile. When it comes to shows, you know, my brand endorsement deals, I've worked very hard to get here. So they pay me really, really well, which I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes when you think of going to a gig to perform, we do have certain uh, organizers that probably feel I'm expensive. Mm. Maybe the word has gotten out that, okay, she's expensive. It's not worth it. Let's get the trending artist right now and capitalize on that. So I realized that they're also in a business. I was uh, speaking to a certain brand and I asked them, I said, you know, we, we can't get into a deal because what you're offering me is, is, is not enough mm. uh, compared to the work I have to do, the amount of people I have on my team and what it takes to produce the quality that we do. And they said, and I said, what type of a deal did you give this person? They're like, no, but that's a trending artist. So I was like, okay, so if you're following trends, then you do that, then I'm not the brand for you. Because mm. I'm not a trendy artist. I'm not about trending. I'm not about being a trending topic. I'm a consistent brand that's about longevity and a brand that is reliable, a brand that is um, drama free, a brand that um, you can look up to. I mean, people understand I've got my music business, but they understand I can sit in boardrooms with CEOs and, and, and presidents of, of companies, and even our president. And, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got your photos? Yeah, I got my photos, but, oh. you know, they, they were pretty bad. Oh. Ooh, the photographer did a terrible job. Terrible job. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm just joking. Don't come for me. <laughs> I'm not even ready for you to come. <laughs> right? <laughs> we are yeah. good. We are mm. good. Yeah, um, so I do sit in a lot of these board meetings and you have to carry yourself in a certain way. You have to speak a certain language, mm. you know. So I've been focusing a lot on also growing my academic side where I'm able to 
sit in any boardroom across the world and be able to justify the brand, grow the brand. So there's a lot of education that needs to go behind it. I can hire the people, yes, but I just like to have the knowledge myself. So even when I hire the person, I know what exactly they're doing. I know exactly what they're talking about. Mm. So in terms of shows, I like to have shows that bring value. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me to rehearse with my people for two, three weeks on end to give because I love to give a good show. Mm. I don't know if you came to the leaders of the new school. Yes, yes, I was definitely there. I was yeah, there. I was there. there was there was the coordination. Music club. Yeah. There, there, there's there's routine. You can see that there's re there's rehearsal that's been. And I, I, lo I love the chemistry you have with your band. Thank you so much. Mm. So there is the band side that I work with, which I notice people can't really. They, they don't want to pay that fee. Mm. But if you want live music and you want a good act, I feel like people need to start removing this type of money. And I'm not going to lessen the, the, the charge that I have and compromise my team just because we want to be seen that we are having shows. Mm. No, no, no um, offense to anybody who's taking shows and what they're getting. I mean, that's them and it's working for them, you know. But for my brand, it just doesn't seem to be working. We'd rather have a big show with Johnny Walker where they're giving us the money we deserve, our $500, eh? $5,000, $4,000, $10,000. Those are the types of figures we should be talking about as shows because we're fighting today to say, why aren't we getting booked internationally? Why are we bringing big acts from outside and giving them more money? Because we've been accepting the less money. So if you're going to book me, book me correct. Even if I come with my dancers and a DJ, which sometimes is necessary, which I personally don't like to do because I want to grow a brand that is an act mm. with a live band. Even if it's a few live elements, it just brings something refreshing to the performance. And I feel the level that I have reached, I need to separate myself from an upcoming artist. I would understand if an upcoming artist does a certain type of a performance because they're getting themselves there. They're getting themselves mm. out there. But it should be different when you watch um, Chloe Bailey perform and when you watch Rihanna or Beyonce perform. Mm. You should be able to get a different experience. And for me, I feel like when people come to watch me at a show, they should leave with the experience rather than just she was there and she sang. She mimed to her song or she, she sang over her song and she was with her dancers or whatever. You know what I mean? It's okay, right? But I feel like we need to raise the bar and promoters need to realize that there's a band involved. Yeah. If you need to get somebody to sponsor the, the band, let them wear your, your whatever t-shirts to mm. show that these are the sponsors of the band. Let them do let's that. do that. Yeah. You know, let's go in the extra mile to show that our acts are capable because we are capable. I've seen a lot of us perform live. Bobby East, his performances of late have all been live and he's so amazing. Mm. Your maps the level he's reached, imagine inviting him to a show and he comes and sings the CD that you play in your car or the MP3 or the Spotify you're playing in your car. It's, he's just there singing to the same songs. Like, yes, it's lovely to see him, but he's your maps, you know? He's an international superstar now. He's supposed to be giving us international standard performances. And that's what I've seen him do. He's with his band, his clothing is on, is on point, and that comes with an expense. Yeah. So even for me, if you don't feel it's worth it to book me with my band and my dancers and to, for us to give you the full package of the show that we, we, we produce, then we'd rather take our time, do our own two, three shows in a year, come and watch us two, three times, and, and we're good. I, I don't even know why... Uh, the director also thought it'd be good for us to do 30 minutes with Cleo because I don't think that's a very good idea. There's a lot of wisdom being shared here that we still have to get. You spoke on um, international uh, acclaim generally, and I think you've also done a pretty good job with that, especially after Big Brother Africa, uh, the Afrima Award. That's, 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 that's what Afrima, there's an award in Afrima, right? Yeah. So, two Afrimas. Yeah, so Afrimas, yeah. uh, just like Portia's anyway. Um, but with that said, let's talk about your record deal with Def Jam yeah. Africa. How is that going? Um, I think with Def Jam Africa, it was a really great collaboration and just a huge accolade to even be recognized and considered by them. I can't really speak much on them because they do have some internal stuff going on right now. Yeah. And I think in due time, they should release a press statement to to you know, let people know what has been happening with them. It's not my story to tell, yeah. but for the deal we had, for me, my focus was to push the leaders of the new school, to expose them to this international label and show them that, listen, where I come from, we have so much more than just me. We have all these amazing young talents. And if you ever consider anything further, please look to you know, shine your eye this side and just show these young people some love. Yeah. So with regards to what's going on internally with them, 
we'll just have to give them time for them to come out and, and speak about it. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I'm sure you're aware that people have been very expectant with your deaf Jamaican Of Africa course, they have. And so yeah. were we. You know, as a yeah. team, we were like, yo, can you get us, you know, the features now? Like, okay, mm. we talking Riri, you know, yeah. you know, we talking Kanye, you know. But there was a lot of hesitation, I think, because there were internal issues even before we came in. Mm, mm. So it was something that we were also kind of stunned about, like, where's our push, where's our marketing budget, where's our this, where's our that. So I don't want to paint them black because they're not. Yeah. I just feel like there was a lot of internal stuff going on with them that eventually they will come out and speak about. But the whole point is that we, we keep moving. Mm -hmm. I think all of this is, if you watch the Genius Show by Kanye West, I always refer to this, he had signed his deal also, I think, with Def Jam, or was it Rockefeller or Rock Nation, and he didn't get the marketing budget that he wanted, and he, he still had to hustle and push until they were like, oh, this is popping, oh, now, okay, fine, we're going to now put in marketing to this, and, you know, when mm. he did Jesus Walk, mm. so... I feel like that one, see, that one documentary I watched about him helped to cool yeah. my temper and my expectations as well. Because sometimes you can have an opportunity and um, you're expectant of something, but it's always what you do with it. It's always about the doors that it opens for you. It's always about it being a stepping stone. So I feel like Def Jam for me was a stepping stone. They didn't um, bring to the table what we expected, but like they say, expectation is the father of disappointment. Yeah. So learning, um, you know, it was a learning curve, great stepping stone, and now we're just looking forward to bigger and greater. Nice, nice. Uh, as we conclude with our conversation here, two things. First of all, I forgot to congratulate you for being nominated again uh, for the for the Potiers. Yes, the Potiers are so exciting. Everybody's quite excited about this. Yeah, I, just, I think this year has received a lot of excitement. Yeah, I yeah. think it's because it's a very diverse um, award show. It, yeah. it includes a lot of people. Mm. And I'm very, very proud of everybody. I think everybody who's been nominated is very well deserving. Even in my category, it's, it's even so hard to continuously campaign for myself because I truly believe in everybody. The fashionistas that I'm with on that category, like sometimes I'm just like, I'm just a tomboy who likes jeans and, and shirts. Like, how did I make it here? <laughs> and then with the best female, I mean, I love all those acts that are there. Zavin is doing some amazing stuff. Mm. I actually took some time to listen to her stuff and I was like, this girl is so creative mm. and very energetic. Uh, Toela, you know, she's already a fave of yeah, mine. Yeah. Uh, who else is in that category? Esther Chungu, I yes. absolutely love her. I think Sampa as well. Sampa the Great is there as and well. And there's one more person. Uh, so we've mentioned there's you, there's Zavin, Toela, Esther, Esther. Uh, my goodness. There's a name I, had, I haven't uh, really seen much of, I think. Yeah. Anyway. Well, That's the one where I had a, um, a little bit of, a, I was like, oh, who's this? But I haven't taken time okay. to look into it. So it's, it's really beautifully competitive. It's very nice. So mm. please, guys, it's competitive, like I've said so. Go right now. Go and vote for me so that, you know, we can attend this award show and I can win my first ever Portier Award because I've never gotten one before. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, I love it's that. All good. But it's I know we've, we've, got, we've got Mazale out. Um, is there a 10,000 kwacha up for grabs again? There's another 10,000 kwacha up for grabs. You know this. I mean, it's not Mazale for not dishing out the Mazale. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, we, we did the, the open verse challenge, which we saw Rap Papi walking away and Neth walking. I really loved Neth, you mm. guys. Second mm. place with the, with the phone. I actually need to send you the phone, Neth. I'm going to send it to you. Don't <laughs> worry. He's in Material Ilanda. Big shout out, Material Ilanda. Yeah. Um, and then now we're going to do a dance challenge because I feel like this one will incorporate more of the ladies. I felt like the ladies were a bit challenged on the rap aspect, but it was deliberate because I really did want to see more women. Yeah. We had Ichisa and Sally the Hunter mm. um, winning also third and fourth place. So congratulations to those two ladies. They were amazing. We had other girls come in. They were also good, but those ones got the most attention. So I hope with the dance challenge we see more girlies coming through and hopefully that the, the 10,000 can go to one of them. Nice. Cleo Ice Cream, thank you so much for speaking with us. Really thank appreciate you coming through. Thank you, Diamonds. Thank you, Chimueka. It's been a pleasure. And look out for the Mazale uh, music video on Diamond TV. You can also request for it on the Diamond Top 10 with Vida. We still have more coming up on, on the table. Before I actually let you go, uh, so World Mental Health Day is uh, uh, 10th of, of October. Mm -hmm. What's, what's, your, what's your take on issues of mental health uh, challenges, depression, and, and so on? Mm. Uh, have you ever experienced any of that before? <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll reserve my comments about mental health and etc. because 
I feel there's a lot that I need to be educated on mm -hmm. about it. And I'm always taking the time every day, not every day, every other time, to educate myself a little bit more about it. But for me, the biggest thing that I'll let you walk away with, anybody who feels they're battling with their mental health, with depression, I know there are some that are clinically diagnosed, sorry about that, some that are clinically diagnosed, like, you know, your ADHDs and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. All those things are coming in of late. But to me, from a young age, please, guys, parents, tell your children there is no problem that you will face that is bigger than what God can, can do, that God can, can move and shake. And even you as an individual, you must never, ever feel that there is a problem too big for God to solve. You have to dig deep within yourself and believe in a higher power. Mm -hmm. Because if you rely on your own strength and your own knowledge within what you know, it's very, very limited. Always believe that there's a greater God that created you, that has a purpose for you. And for you to still have breath in you means you still have a purpose and you still have something to achieve and something to give into this world. So please look beyond you and, you know, happy Mental Health Day. It might not be enough for me to say this, yeah. but I hope that it does touch somebody and change somebody's perspective and how they view things as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and this coming week is also um, Day of National Prayer, Reconciliation and, okay. and, and Fasting. Oh. <laughs> to pray. <laughs> it's to pray. I mean, I mean, people do different things on that day. It's a from holiday. From the 18th, right? From the 18th, yeah. Okay. Yeah, which you I think I have something on the 19th. Thing. Okay, I need to see my dermatologist. Okay, yeah. so 18th. Yeah. Uh-huh. We'll be praying. Yeah. And fasting. And fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure. What she said. What I said. Yes. Remember. That's what we'll be doing. <laughs> Once again, thanks a lot, Clear Screen, for joining us. And thank you as well for tuning in to this episode of On the Table. Back again next week, Sunday. And I do have another guest that you can look out for. Take a look. I honestly don't know why mm. a good looking woman like myself, very financially independent, <laughs> very business minded, very everything, everything, and very educated, mm. would actually be single in this country. I'm actually thinking. Chela is in the country. I'd like to bring him here. Oh, yeah. I think that would be... If you guys will not punch each other, because <laughs> I saw the last time, I'm like, okay. Uh, with the way business is going, it's a matter of time before you also get your own crew crew. People have pointed fingers at me and said, no, she's bitter because, you know, she can't even congratulate, she can't do ABCD. But speaking of, um, of Wukata, what, what's the relationship like right now with the father? In, in the process of trying to look out for my child and everything, I... I... I went to court actually. Yeah, I went to court and um, just to see some commitments.